Hi, and welcome to my channel. I'm Tammy, and I'm here to bring you the project that we're doing in our Trick or Treat Blog Hop. And I hope that you're inspired by all the projects that you're seeing by, our, by the designers and crafters that have joined in on this Blog Hop, because each of the participants is listed below in my comments. So you need to visit each channel, and you need to subscribe between the 21st, which is today, and the 27th. There'll be prizes on each person's uh, blog hop and for country craft creations we'll be giving away a prize to one of the lucky comments below you have to comment to the video and then you have to comment and like all of the other blog hops channels you'll be winning a $25 gift certificate to country craft creations and I know there's a couple of other um, gift certificates out there so you can really win a nice bundle to start your holiday crafting with to be eligible, you must be at least 18 years old, and you have to subscribe to all of our channels below, and you have to leave a comment. So the drawing will be held October 27th, and the lineup is Kim Can't Stop Crafting, there's Laura's Craft Zone, myself, Liv Craft and Love, Anne-Marie, Sandy, Kathy Lee, and the Terra 148. So welcome again, and thank you for joining us. So for my project, I've chosen to do the tree box and in the tree box it's the dispenser and I like these dispensers because they're so fun and easy to resize now I've already put my I do a closure only because this in transport tends to come open if your candies are heavy like the M&Ms and then what's fun is the grandkids just adore and love these even your bigger M&Ms peanuts will fit in here but they're great for the school teachers, and it will stay pretty good. But still, there's a lot of candy in this one, so I'm going to give you two sizes. The one is the size that I've done here, and I'm going to also, I've done a resize to make this smaller. So if you're making a lot of, of gifts for the kids, grandkids, and you know, I noticed grandparents, grandparents are really into making things for the grandkids' school. I know I am. Leftover buttons for my stash. Then I did make this little cute tag that we'll make. It's just one and seven eight or one and a quarter by one and seven eighths long, just so you can write who it's from. And we'll be making the cute little rosette on the top. So your box is a nice tight fit. Like I said, this one you can fit a lot of candies in. So you want it to be a nice tight fit. You don't want that lid falling off. So let's get started. Like I said, this one I'm I've resized. So this box actually measures five and a quarter with the lid. It's five inches. So if you want to make a nice tall one, you're going to cut your paper eight and a half long by five and a half wide. For the shorter version that I'm going to make on camera, because if you're making a lot, which I will be for, for the ten grandkids maybe more than that, I think there's 11. <laughs> I'm making mine eight and a half by four and a half. So here's the beauty of this. You could even make this 12 inches long. It'll come out to be like 11 and a half. Um, you can make it any length that you want, height wise. You just need to keep your paper at eight and a half. So eight and a half by five, eight and a half by six, eight and a half by seven, it won't matter. You're going to score the exact same way. That's the beauty of this project. And it is also one that's been out there for many years, so I don't know who the original designer is, but whoever it is, they did a fabulous job. 4x4 four four for the lid, and 3x4 for our opening. That pulls down at the bottom. Then I'm also going to be using my circle punch, and mine measures 2 inches, but you could get by with the 1 and 3 quarters. 2 inches is really snug and tight, and that's, that's kind of what you want. And for tools, that's basically it. I'll be using a smaller circle punch that will be for my rosette let's get started with scoring of our eight and a half by minus four and a half so I like the smaller version when I have a lot to make or for teachers at school very simple scoring we're going to score two four six and eight Flip to mine is going to be on the four and a half inch side. Yours may be at five, six, seven, eight, however big you want to make this. You're going to score your bottom at half inch. Now, let me do give you kind of, and you can play with this. If you do go bigger like 10, you might want to score this bottom because this is what's going to hold everything in 
at you might want to score it at an inch. It's totally up to you. Now with my small cutter, I am going to cut another piece of the black cardstock. I'll also be cutting my pattern, but you're going to cut it at one and seven eighths because that's the how our, our box is two by two by one and seven eighths. So your box is always going to be this this width, one or two by two, no matter how tall you decide to make your box. So we're going to get started. I like to score my clean up burnish my score lines first. The shorter version, like I said, is really cute. Or if you're mailing it to someone or you're gifting it along with a swap, these are really cute to put in the swap, then wrap them in cellophane and include them. And that's why I like to put a closure on the bottom so that doesn't just flip open. Okay, we're going to we're going to go ahead and cut out this little square. And you're just going to cut it straight from the bottom, but then I do a small angle there. And just a tiny bit of an angle here at the top. Then we're going to cut straight up to the score line on those three score lines. Then when we get back to scoring, we can set that aside. Our 4x4 four four is going to go into our scoreboard and on all four sides you're going to score at one inch. Again, same size for any size box. Now let me show you the three by four. So you need to start on the four inch side. We want to score three sides. We're going to start here on the four inch side. We're going to score at one inch. You're going to turn to the three inch side and score at one inch. And you'll turn back to the four inch side and score at three inches. And that is all. You don't want that four score line. So let's start with this guy. And burnish those score lines. The easiest way I like to do is we're going to remove this longest part first. You're going to cut it so it looks like a T. Then we need to turn this into an arrow. So I turned it upside down, facing myself, starting at this score line. So to the score line, out. And this is what you have, and this becomes our little shoot. And also, one thing to make this stronger is I am going to be matting, putting mat. I'm going to mat the outside. Um, I mean, well, this side right here and the inside. It just makes it that much more stronger. A lot of times we consider these like disposable projects. Not everybody will keep them, but somebody might. And making it a little stronger doesn't take much more paper. So our lid, we'll just go ahead and burnish these score lines. Then we're going to cut these, these two here, you're going to cut straight up to that score line and then angle. And I do a little bit of an angle on the outside straight up keep that straight that's what keeps your box lid square and we will repeat you're going to love all the ideas from the other designers who are participating in the hop a lot of fun ideas 
and they don't just do it for this hop. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of their fabulous projects. This little guy is just for the bottom, so we're going to leave that as is. Now that we have this prepared, I want to match each square. So go ahead and measure yours. Mine comes out to be four inches. So I've already cut my matting at three and seven eighths. And that will get in the way of the lid just a little bit. So I'm going to take this down to three and three quarters. I'm going to use the quarter inch, but when I do the, you want it to sit just a hair under the lid. Oh, goodness. Now, these are two inch squares, so we're going to cut four of them at one and seven eighths. I'm going to turn it this way. I'm going to go in sequence. That's not one and seven eighths. There we go. Get this correct. And then I'll use the back side of the paper to match my other thing. And I've got, I mean, this is a great project for using up your scraps. And then we're going to cut a one and seven eighths by one and seven eighths. This will go on to the bottom. And you can leave your bottom just the plain black if you prefer. And because it is a gift, it doesn't take but a few seconds to go ahead and ink those edges up. And I'm just using black. And I do the back side. That way I don't smear it all over the front. I like to ink. I just don't like it smeared. And I'm not very neat at inking. <laughs> So that's why we go to the back side. Cute, adorable paper. I forgot to tell you what I was using. I am using the Hocus Pocus by Echo Park. And I know we still have some available at countrycraftcreations.com online. It is um, running out just about everywhere because Echo Park has been coming out with so many different lines. They are not reprinting. And their holiday papers, they never do reprint. So we do still have single sheets, and you might want to grab it. It's just adorable. Now remember, this is going to sit below. You're going to have a little extra at the top, and that's to allow room for the lid. And you do have a tight fitting lid. This is just adorable paper, so it's perfect for these projects and your Halloween card making, and we still have plenty of time to get these done. Especially those of you going on crops. These are the best projects, if you can get past the giggling. I know, at our retreats, we're laughing so much. And see, that's kind of why I went in sequence, so my papers matched up. There's my little... And it won't matter because they will be folded into a square, but there we go. Just like that, you have the matting all done. Now we need to turn this into a box. So let's, let's do something really quick here. We're not going to quite turn it into a box, but I'm going to reburnish all of my score lines and I do burnish them quite hard when I'm doing a box so I want a square neat tight box okay now turn this over and you have this square that we've cut out here so this one becomes the candy dispenser and don't fret if you cut the wrong side it it'll still work out I'm oh my gosh but what we're going to do now is I'm going to put my punch up into here, and I'm going to try and line it up with the sides. So this takes just a little patience. And you do want to leave your flap down. Okay. 
Okay. Now I'm going about halfway. So I always mark my punch. Actually, that's a quarter. A half would be more. I'm only going to go a quarter of the way up. So I take that back. And what I'm doing is I'm checking my sides. Also, it depends on your candy, what you want to put in here. And one thing I didn't mention that I meant to mention in the beginning is this is great for dog treats. So if you have friends, no, see, I'm going to cut that up. If you have friends that have furry friends and not children, don't hesitate. Pets love it. So I'm going to cut this up now about a half inch, and you will be able to adjust that if you need, because we want... these to fit in to the sides so you can kind of pre-check it and I can tell now I need to go up a little higher I'm going to flip it over and trim the excess there and then we're going to just flip this over We'll match those right up nice and flat, makes it so simple to put together. And I'm using wet adhesive art glitter glue, but you can use your score tape or any dry wet adhesive you like. Now, to just make this a little simpler, I like to add some adhesive on the corners and using a clothespin because clothespins are those great extra helpers in crafting that don't leave marks on your paper but we want to make sure we're squared up here Wow, didn't hold very well. What on earth? I'm also still working with a bum arm <laughs> that I heard a while ago, and it's just not very strong. You know, you don't have to be super perfect because this is just a small box, but I just can't help it. So here, I want to cut a piece that is 1 and 7 eighths by 7 eighths of an inch. And I do have pieces and parts for my other one. going to cut two pieces that are seven eighths of an inch. And I'm not worried about the inking the edges for the one on the inside because this is not toxic. And like I said, this is not an absolute necessary step. The glue is also non-toxic, so I know it won't hurt anyone that eats it. I have grandchildren. I know this for a fact. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Okay. I 
and our slider piece will just fit right inside there. It just takes a moment to get the hang of it. Now I like to put it in. And then that black piece we cut in the beginning, and I am going to still cover it with the pattern paper, but this kind of helps hold the shape. And then if a little glue gets on there, that's even better because it's going to hold it in. And the smaller size is just, I think, adorable. So here's the two different sizes. Oops. need to pay attention here. So I need to cut mine up a little bit. So you do want that to fold flat. There we go. Works great. Love it. We'll set this one aside. Let's do the lid. One and seven eighths by one and seven eighths. And I'm going to use the candy. I was going to use the bats, but I think I'll go ahead with the, the candy on this one. This was left over from the first one. So like I said, you can use tons of your scraps and really get things used up. And I did not, uh, I do not do the inside because you need it to be loose fitting. So this is already one in seven eight. Excuse me. And let's go ahead and cut four pieces at seven eighths of an inch. on left hand. Sorry. Once his arms all better. Hopefully. Cute for your neighbors also. Don't forget, especially if you have neighbors who are empty nesters. They do love to get fun little things. Sometimes we forget about them. Or even, you know, our empty nest parents. And I like to do all the matting while my when I'm doing boxes. So if you follow my tutorials, you know, I like to mat everything that is flat. I do it on my live shows that we do in Scrapbookers of Country Craft Creations on Facebook. And I do a live show on Authentique where I make, I do make a lot of boxes. I love making boxes. And there's a lot of great um, projects you can make with boxes. I love making them because it turns your flat paper into a 3D usable project. And not so much the, you know, flat layout, put your pictures on a piece of paper as I am 
I like to make things. So once again, again, push that lid. So there we go. You want it to be flat against the top. So you have a nice square lid. Just move the paper so it goes where you want it to go. Oh, there's my other little clothespin. Like I said, clothespins are great for giving you extra fingers to work with. And then if you have a Sam's, even Walmart, you can get the big bags of M&M's. Or like I said, don't forget your doggy friends. This would be really cute to get the smaller doggy treats to put inside the box for your dog friends. And I do not mat the inside. Usually I do on my boxes, but we're not going to because we want, and it's going to be a tight fit. You're going to have to kind of push your box in there, and that's what you want because you don't want your dispenser lid to fall off. Then you can fill it full of your, I won't fill this one, but you just, Fill it full of your M&Ms, but let's put the, the ribbon on the bottom. And I have a piece of orange, so I'll use that one. And what I do, especially before I fill it, also, if you don't want to do a ribbon closure on the bottom, grab yourself a rubber band. A rubber band is really helpful for when you're filling this. And you can also transport these with little rubber bands around the bottom it will keep your candy from opening and spilling out or you can put it in a cellophane you and I've had questions where do you get the cellophanes well if you go to Joann's or Hobby Lobby's in the candy making cake making aisle you will find the little cellophane bags and you can pick those up and then really make the cute presentation and on the back if you want this to become permanent, I'm actually just going to use got lots of leftover buttons from older Halloween projects. So now is a good time to really use those up. I'm just going to hot glue a button on the back, and that's also going to hold my ribbon. Or you can do as I did. I cut one of the cut aparts down, and then I just use my art glitter glue on there. So that's going to hold that nice and tight. And let's go ahead and create the really cute little rosette on the top. So what I did is I cut a four inch piece and I've already pre-scored and I do score it half inch. You can do quarter inch. But one thing I do different is I score both sides. It just makes the folding process a lot easier. And this one um, is one and three quarters that's left over. I'm just going to cut these down into three quarter inch strips because I don't want a very big rosette. Also, when you score it on both sides, so be careful when scoring, it helps it to lay flat when you want to cut it. Those are the same. They are. So chances are, what I do is I just start right here. On this one, it's so small. See, I can, when I, I fold it, I can actually just do it manually because it's so little. And I have fold, scored both sides. So it makes folding it extremely simple. Don't worry if they're not perfectly straight matching because they don't have to be. Again, just give it some squeezes along the way. And 
I thought we were going to make it through without my little beagle, Wilbur, acting up. Okay, what I'd like to do is take this one and I'm going to overlap. I'm going to add my art glitter glue and we're just going to overlap those so it continues on. And the end is where I'm going to have to cut one off, but also you'll want to get your circles ready. So I'm using this little circle punch, and I believe it's three quarters of an inch. You can use a square. It doesn't have to be this. And it's a little bit, you can use any, any piece of paper. You can even cut a triangle. That will work. So now as we fold this all up, into one, just three squish it. Um, there we go. Now these ends are going to be able to overlap again. If they don't meet, say this was going down and that was up, I would cut one off. And you'll see me do that also if you follow my tutorials. I will cut one of these ends off so that I can overlap them because I don't like any of that bulk when you butt them up. And I do want the white side to show, so it's easier for me to start in the back. Get our hot glue gun and our circle or your piece of paper. Whoops. Ready. These little ones can be, there we go, a little tricky. There we go. There we are. Then I'm going to. And this is the back side. I'm just going to smooth and kind of, there we go, move it around to where it looks pretty even while it's still good and hot. Because you can move it. Flip that over. See what we've got. Oh, and our my stash. So I have this cute little witch. And I figure, you know, now's a good time on these little projects. Now that I'm done with my big Halloween one, to use these up because there'll be more next year. Whoops. And let's make the little tag. So my tag is two inches by one and a quarter. Goodness, I have, and I have my small angle. If you don't have a small angle, you can go ahead and uh, just clip those little corners off. And mine came out to be just a little more. So one and an eighth is my matting by one and three fourths. Sorry, I keep looking over because I just know Wilbur's into something he's not supposed to. Yeah, and he looked at me. So one and an eighth. I cut it by one and three quarters. The back side, I used just some scraps. I said, this is really a good use of all your scrap pieces. These are also fun tags to make for Christmas. But I'd make them a little bit bigger. And they're great for your packages. Use your scraps. Have a day. Get the family together or friends. And you guys can make Christmas tags. Halloween tags for all your cute little Halloween gifts. And they only cost your scraps. And I like the 
solid cardstock for the back, unless you want to leave it black and then just use like a white gel, which I do have one that would be cute too. Then we're going to punch a hole. I'm just using the small. You can use ribbon, you can use twine, anything you like. Oh, I have a puppy that he's going to get it when I'm finished, and he knows it. <laughs> That I am just going to put this underneath our rosette so it hangs over the edge. Also, be sure to, like I said, uh, mentioned in the beginning, to check out all the designers that are on the blog hop. See, and then you have the little edges hanging out. Looks really cute. I found that the a ribbon lays a lot flatter than your twine. A um, couple more things. Let's go ahead and, and let's do a little decorating on the front. How cute is that? Trick or treat. I'm going to have it hang over the edge there. We'll see, it'll still come up with the box. And let's, I have a pumpkin. I sure do. And then all that all depends on to what you want to use from your stash. But it definitely, oh, here we go. Definitely is a good way to use it up. And with buttons, it's great to have a shank cutter. You can just pick those up at your Joann's. That's where I got mine. Fill full of candy. I'm sure they're two different sizes. Really cute. You could even go smaller, so you can make a lot more. And that is my project for our trick or treat vlog hop. Thank you again for joining me, and I hope you enjoy all the projects that the designers are bringing to you for this um, Halloween season. And don't forget to subscribe and comment. You need to comment down below to be entered into the drawing on the 27th for the $25 gift certificate to Country Craft Creations. Thank you, everybody, and bye-bye.